What's going on guys? Today we're going to talk about consistency. Alright guys, so welcome back to the channel. Um, it's been a little bit of time since I posted the last video. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit today about consistency in this business uh, and the role specifically that it'll play with your performance. Um, first and foremost, consistency means like bringing as many possible efficiencies to the business as possible, right? So consistency for me starts with um, going to the same thrift stores at the same times a day or at least the same number of times a week. Uh, so you can build those relationships so that the employees and the managers of those locations get to know you, they get to know your face, uh, and you get to build that reputation as like the book guy or the book girl in your community. Uh, but it goes further than that, right? So um, being consistent about getting your books only goes so far if you're not being consistent with how often and how regularly you send those books into Amazon. You know, a lot of times, you know, we put all this emphasis on sourcing and getting the books and getting the books cheaper or better value on the books um, or being more efficient in that aspect. And we kind of put away, like, put this on the like back burner as far as, you know, putting books into a batch and sending them into Amazon. It doesn't matter how many books you get, how many books you source, if you don't have them in your active inventory. Um, so you, you don't want to, you know, put those things on the back burner. They're just as important, or if not more important, um, you know, to process those books and get them in your active inventory, so that you can get that capital back into your wallet, so you can go and buy more books. Um, you know, so in this business. It's not like a regular nine to five job where you can just show up, punch a clock, you do your job at the end of the week or end of two weeks, you get a paycheck. Uh, we are literally compensated for sales. And the only way to drive sales, since it's an online marketplace through Amazon, uh, you can't really run ads on these things, right? Um, you might be able to, I haven't personally done that yet. I'll look into it. Um, but from my experience, a used book, you can't really run an ad for. So it's really important, you know, that you process those books in a regular time frame so that they're in, they're active, they can be sold. Because um, what good are they doing you, like, on the floor in your dining room or on a bookshelf waiting to be processed? Um, and here's why I say that, right? So if, let's say, you have, I don't know, a couple of good, like, say, two or three good sourcing days and now you've got 500 books, well, it say it takes you a week to list those books and send them in. Well, in that week, so many things can happen. People can change the price. Those books can sell. The seller rank is fluid. It changes every single time that book sells. So all the information that you took into account to make that purchase, after a while, after let's say a week, sometimes in my experience, I'll buy a book and two hours later, all the stats on that book have changed. So it's no longer profitable. You know, and this is just exacerbated if you just wait a week or three days or four days. So this is where consistency really starts to come in because the more often that you send books in and the regularly being shipped in, whenever you make that buying decision to get that book and you send it in, you don't have to worry about did the price change or is it not profitable now? Did the price tank? You know, those sorts of things start to be minimized in that efficiency so you can rest more assured that you're going to be able to sell that book using that same buying decision that you used to mine, to make that purchase. Uh, so you definitely don't want to just leave the books sitting in your dining room or sitting on your bookshelf waiting to be listed. Take it from me, I've done it. Um, you know, I've had 1,100 books, 1,200 books just sitting there waiting to be processed. Um, for the longest time I had uh, three Gaylords in my back room. Uh, like. 2,500 books just sitting there waiting to be processed. Now, I knew that 95% of them were going to be duds, so I already planned for those. Um, but those those 5% of books that were in those boxes, you don't want that price to go, you know, too far down. Um, you know, especially if it's a textbook, right? So we know that there's textbook season. You know that you've got January and you've got June. Uh, probably really like 
early to mid December to January, and then you've got like you know the summer month like June, uh, maybe late May to June, something like that. And those are the two big opportunities to sell textbooks. So if you miss that window, now you're chasing that sale rather than having your books in inventory, waiting to be sold, priced accordingly, so that all they've got to do is click a button, buy your book, and ship it to, ship it to themselves. Um, yeah, just trust me. You know, the last thing you want to do is have books just sitting around, collecting dust, taking up space, giving you anxiety. Um, just get those books in. Send them in. There's no reason to hold on to them, you know? Uh, but as far as listing books, that's not the only uh, consistency thing that you should be worried about. You know, you should also be worried about sourcing. Uh, rightly so. You just don't want to, you know, too, too much emphasis on sourcing. You want to have a good balance. And that's one of the challenges with this job, uh, with this business, is, you know, balancing how often you source versus how often you list. Uh, and if you get to the point where one is out of control and the other is being neglected, and you may want to look at growing your business, you know, take on some, uh, take on some employees, hire somebody, use a virtual assistant to list if you have to, you know, there's a lot of places that you can, um, you know, reach out to virtual assistants, there's a lot of resources available to you online, um, you could always use Craigslist or Facebook, you know, look for an employee there, I'm sure there's a part-time mom, uh, shout out to Roma the Roamer for using, you know, stay-at-home moms to, you know, help grow his business, you know, it's a symbiotic relationship, he helps them, they help him, you know, that business can grow, and, you know, that's how you get past these plateaus, where you've got books you don't know what to do with because you don't have time and you can't take a day away from sourcing, otherwise you're going to miss out on those opportunities, you know, or vice versa, if you've got books that you have to list and you don't want to miss those opportunities, hire somebody to source, you know, pay somebody to go to you know, a Goodwill or several of your Goodwills that you visit, you know, and then have them scan all the books. And when they find the books, pay them per book or pay them per hour, whatever works for your business model. I think, but we really need to start building in these efficiencies into our business in 2020. That's the only way we're going to grow these businesses. So that's all I've got for that. I don't want to, you know, beat a dead horse, but put some serious thought towards where you're focusing your energies. You know, a lot of businesses, you'll see 20% of the workforce doing 80% of the work. So you want to make sure that you've got a good balance in your business so that it's a 50-50, maybe a 60-40 relationship. You know, you want to make sure that you're not only focused on getting things in, but processing, processing them to get them out. That's how you're going to grow the business. That's how you're going to get those big payouts. That's how you're going to grow your sales. Um, just focus on it, guys. That's all I'm saying. If you guys get a chance, you like the video, um, it helps with the algorithm. Feel free to subscribe. I'm going to try to push out uh, videos once a week. I'm still working on Sundays. Um, this one's going to go out a little bit late, but I'm still getting into the routine. So bear with me, guys. And, um, yeah, drop a comment below. Let me know what you guys think. I'm going to put a link in the description for all the stuff that I think might be helpful, uh, including boxes that I use, the tape that I use, the printer I use, where I get my labels, all kinds of stuff. I'll have a link for Exceller List. If you guys aren't using that, that's going to save you all kinds of time when you're listing books. Um, you know, that dropped my, my processing time. I was listing maybe one box of books, 27 to 30 books, in about an hour. And with Exceller List, that drops that down to about a fifth of the time. So it's definitely something that's worthwhile. You get a two-week free trial. I'll have a link there. I do get a small kickback on that. If you do decide to click the link, you don't have to. Feel free to go to AccelerList.com. Uh, Scout IQ is going to have a link down there as well. Uh, shout out to Scout IQ for always keeping it real and having all the information we need to make a decision on one screen. Um, I'll have a couple of different links as well to the rest of the software I use, including new price and uh, reprice it. Uh, and I'll catch you guys next time. Have a great day, guys.